Tonight, workers across the length and breadth of the country under the united umbrella of the TUC issue one-week ultimatum to government to exempt pension funds from debt action program or face a public sector shutdown. We expect all workers and unions to join us and be ready to participate fully in any industrial action to protect our pension funds. We have the latest as IMF team finalizes their consultations with government. But will the latest withdrawal of all pension funds from the voluntary debt exchange program cost government a bailout? It's Top Story with Evans Mensah. And Top Story is always brought to you by Vodafone. Tonight, workers across the length and breadth of the country under the umbrella, the United Umbrella of the Trade Union Congress have issued a one-week ultimatum to government to exempt pension funds from the debt action program or face a public sector shutdown. We are also learning that they have now formally written to the finance minister, announcing to government that they will not participate in the debt action programs. The all pension funds in this country have resolved on the back of the TUC's meeting with the workers' union to declare their withdrawal from the uh, program going forward. As we know, the IMF team is in the country finalizing its, cons its consultations uh, for a possible announcement later this week. We'll be examining what this means uh, for the government's uh, desire to secure a bailout pretty shortly. But in the studio with me is my colleague, Kojo Brace, who was at the TUC uh, press conference and and could you say they have written now formally yeah. to the finance minister yes last week we heard from the uh, uh the representatives of the corporate trustees who represent the funds uh, they had issues but then they came back and said they are softening their stance a bit they want to negotiate instead of an outright rejection but today the tuc left us in no doubt yeah that they've told the pension funds and have written to the finance ministry to communicate saying that they will not be participating exactly let me share with you the details of the letter they sent to the minister now it says we have uh, uh, conducted an extensive scrutiny of the uh, domestic debt exchange program uh, which uh, was launched on 5th december 2022 we have come to a firm conclusion that uh, the program will negatively affect pension funds of our members and uh, consequently their retirement income security. The Trade uh, Union Congress, TUC, and its affiliate national unions have therefore uh, decided that the pension funds of, of its members will not be part of the domestic debt exchange program. We are hereby by this letter demanding that all pension funds invested in government bonds should be completely exempted from the domestic debt exchange program. We further demand that within a week of receiving this letter, government should publicly announce that all pension funds, including that of SNIT, are exempted from the program. Those are the details of the letter. And this is because mm. they believe if they participate in the debt action program, the workers' pensions will be affected. Exactly. That's, that's what they, they feel, that, it, they, that the pensions will be affected and their lives after pension will be affected as well. Already pension is low. And we will have thought that our government will do everything to protect even the small pension that we have. Instead, they are introducing programs inspired by IMF to cut further pension income. And as we used to say, we no go sit down. Yes. Yes. Therefore, the Trade Union Congress and all its affiliate national unions have decided that pension funds of our members will not be part of the domestic debt exchange program. Let me repeat that one. The TUC and all our athletes have decided, and this is a very firm decision, that the pension funds of our members will not be part of the domestic debt exchange program. So, earlier this morning, we have dispatched a letter to the Minister for Finance and we are demanding that all pension funds invested in government bonds should be completely exempted from the domestic debt exchange program. We are also demanding in that letter that within one week from today, government should publicly 
announced that all pension funds, including SNIT, are exempted from the debt exchange program. Again, in the letter, we have said notice that if government fails to accede to our demand within one week, we will advise ourselves. Um, and they were clear what this advice will be. We'll come to that pretty shortly. Mm. But this isn't the only matter that they touched on. Exactly. They also went back to the 2023 budget and, and touched on a few of the touch me measures introduced. Yeah, now, according to them, and, and the person who's speaking is Dr. Anthony Yaoban, who is the Secretary General of the TUC. Now, he says that touching, I mean, the increment and introduction of taxes that were found in the 2023 budget were insensitive because of the current economic conditions that we find ourselves that when people are crying of difficulties you don't increase taxes and he feels that it was insensitive on the part of government in the budget government announced various imf inspired measures to deal with the economic and financial crisis some of which are clearly inappropriate and wrong and they include the following number one taxation Government has announced increases in taxes starting from January 2023 in this current economic situation. I know what they touch VAT, which is indirect consumption tax, affects everybody equally, whether you are poor or you are rich. And the value added tax rate is projected to go by to go up by 2 percentage, 2.5 percentage points. But if you work percentage points, it's getting to about 14 percent increase. They have also increase the maximum personal income tax margin from 30% to 35%. Currently, if you earn 4,000 a month, you're already in the high bracket. And they are moving you to 35%, which leaves less money in your pocket for you and your family in these current economic conditions. And they are also saying that, as if this is not enough, they are saying that if you transfer that small money to your mother in the village, they are removing the threshold. And these taxes will obviously hurt the poor and workers who are on fixed incomes and who are on low incomes. And as usual, businesses will, will, will pass it up to us. So in our comments we, to, the, to the government, which we have sent to government already. Did they offer any suggestions how government can resolve the crisis? No, they did. They, they, according to them, government is only focused on looking outside of itself to look at how it can solve the, economy, uh, the current economic challenges. But government must do well to look within because the solutions are within government. We vehemently opposed these tax measures and challenged government to use other measures to mobilize revenue, including one, plugging the leakages in the tax system. And we know it, that there is so much going out on the, into the drain. We also advise that they should rather improve the tax efficiency because it costs too much to collect the taxes that we are collecting. And then we also advise that government should deal decisively with the severe infractions in the Auditor General's reports. Every year, account, uh, Auditor General comes with figures uh, and amounts that did not go as they should. So we are taking this opportunity at this press conference to reiterate our demand for immediate and radical downsizing of government. Uh, we, we think that this is important. If you want Ghanaians to sacrifice, we should have a sign that our government is serious. If government is serious and they want us to be serious about this economy and this country, they should take the lead. And we expect the president to do that before the end of this year. We don't have time to waste. We expect that this exercise that we are proposing must include a very substantial reduction in the number of ministries and ministerial portfolios. In some ministries, they have three deputies. And you wonder what they are doing. And we are saying that these measures are needed now to assure the good people of Ghana that our government is doing its part to reduce expenditure. So, Kojo, I wonder when they gave the government the ultimatum. Now, it's what counting down six more days for yes. that to expire. Did they specify what they would do um, beyond saying we'll advise ourselves? Well, they, they didn't specify. But if you read between the lines of what they are saying, it seeks to tell you that, look, we will embark on an industrial action because it says all workers must brace themselves 
for what is to come and support this action that they will take. The one week ultimatum for government to announce the exemption of pension funds from the dust exchange program will expire on Monday, 19 December 2020. We expect all workers and unions to join us and be ready to participate fully in any industrial action to protect our pension funds. Workers will no longer bear the consequences of any IMF inspired or IMF sponsored policies and programs. And government should know that it is responsible for all the consequences of all its decisions, including the decision to go to IMF. And, of course, this is the TUC's decision now. And we now know, based on what the TUC is saying, that the letter they've written to the finance minister communicates a complete withdrawal from the voluntary debt action program uh, by pension funds in the country. Uh, we'll speak now to uh, Dr. Kwabana Nyako Otu. He's a chief economist with the TUC. Hello, Doc. Hello. Great to have you join us. Uh, we also are joined by uh, Professor Gofford Bopwe, a professor of economics. Uh, Prof, thanks for your time here on, uh, on Top Story. Thank you. Good evening to your cherished listeners. And, and later, we'll tell you what we know uh, about the volume of uh, bonds that the pension funds hold and how significant that will be to the total portfolio that government wants to uh, save in terms of the debt savings that then will give them the breathing space to get the bailout. So how significant will this be then to the whole conversation with the IMF now that the pension funds have withdrawn and say they won't participate in a voluntary direction? We'll, we'll explain that for you with the numbers that we know from the finance ministry pretty shortly. But uh, Dr. Kabdan Yakoto, I mean, so this letter you, you wrote to the finance ministry, from what I read in your statement, you wrote it last week. Have you had any reaction or response from the finance ministry? No, we haven't. But it's also because it was delivered this morning. Oh, this morning. Um, but, so when you say that the pension funds will not participate, um, I wonder, because the pension funds themselves are in, independent entities, so they can take their own decisions. They simply are holding your funds, but they have their own you know, shareholders, etc. So how did that work? Oh, they are holding our funds. The key word is, was what you just said. They are holding our funds. And they, they are beholden to us. I mean, there's no way they can go and do investment without the trustees authorizing that kind of investment. So for us, we are not just asking the pension fund managers not to uh, participate. But we are also asking government to publicly announce that pension funds have been exempted from the entire debt exchange program. And that's important. So clarify for me. Yes, you're holding your funds. So you, I'm assuming, and tell me if this will happen, that you reached out to your fund managers and okay. told them not to participate. And they agreed with you. Is that what happened? They have to agree with us. But the next step is to categorically get government to come out and say that just like the exempted treasury bills, Pension funds have also been completely exempted. And I'm saying this is very important because, I mean, there are some communication to the effect. I mean, the Deputy Minister for Finance was saying that those that choose not to, volu to participate uh, will be on their own. And that carries a lot of weight. And this is for this reason that we are asking government to publicly announce that it has exempted pension funds from the debt exchange program. I, 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 I wonder why that is necessary, considering that this is a voluntary debt exchange program. So you can decide to or not to. So do you really need government to say that? Yeah, we need government to say that. When the deputy minister says that, if you don't, I mean, if you read the entire debt exchange program, it is voluntary but not voluntary. I mean, you get the point I'm making. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's voluntary. I mean, there, there are consequences for not participating, but it's voluntary. I mean, 
so then, I mean, why, why should there be a consequence? We bought bonds with a certain coupon rate and face value. If you are not participating, there should be no consequence. Pay us the bond value plus the interest. But you are right. There are consequences. And these are the reasons why we think that government must publicly exempt the pension fund. You know, I asked that question because last week when the, uh, the Association of Corporate Trustees were the first to issue a statement declaring that they will reject, in fact, they are rejecting the debt action program and they represent the uh, pension funds. But subsequently, um, a, a few days later, after a few engagements, they had come back with a, a new position, which is that they are no longer holding on to outright rejection, but rather they want to negotiate, renegotiate the terms first announced by the finance minister. Don't take my word for it. This is a quick uh, position expressed by the, the head of the association representing the funds in which, uh, which hold your funds. This is uh, Mr. Esso. The, the requirement of Act 360 and remitted to uh, corporate trustees to manage. Even though that was our initial position, I think now we have also understood that the country is facing economic um, distress and we all need to have sacrifice like the way the finance minister put it so that we can all have a certain level that can help the economy to recover again. And so we are also hoping to renegotiate the terms. I think our initial position was so rigid, uh, for example, that we are amenable to renegotiating the terms so that we can have at least a minimum uh, requirement that can satisfy our pension fund contribution. Um, so, Dr. Kwabunanyako, so that is the executive secretary of the Chamber of Corporate Trustees, Thomas Esso. Their position is not to outrightly reject participation, but to renegotiate the terms. So, subsequently, they came back to us with this position, and we have some of our unions, the men, have categorically told them that we will not participate. Please stay with me. I want to bring in Professor Gofred Bokpoeng. Prof. So if all the pension funds refuse to participate, what will that mean for government's ultimate objective of reducing our debt stock and paving way for the IMF bailout? Does that mean it's dead? No, um, it, it, it's quite complicated. Um, I think we are in a very deep crisis. Um, Evans, look at it this way. Assuming government were to have its way and even suspend interest payment across all its instruments, treasury bills, bonds, all of that, and even include external debt uh, servicing obligations, as captured in the 2023 budget, right? Approximately 53 billion cities. It will not be enough. Um, if you do the analysis, uh, the, the, the primary surplus we need to record in the next four years, the next five years, in order to crawl back to a sustainable debt level, is averaging $6.4 billion. If you look at that at the current exchange rate, we are looking at something in excess of 75 billion cities. So, so that tells you that the level of savings that has to be made on annual basis to, re, to bring the debt to a more sustainable level, even, even if you want to bring present value of debt to GDP ratio to let's say 55% or your debt service to revenue ratio to below 20%, even <laughs> this is huge. You know, that's why we said that Ghanaians had no idea the extent of mess that we have created that we needed to, to resolve and that the worst is yet to happen. Look, Evans, uh, this is not to scare anyone. This is the, the debt testing government announced is just the first level. There will be more to come. Okay. Now, what makes it a bit painful uh, uh, prof, also is so, what prof, the... Prof, prof, I need to interject. When you say there will be more to come, really? What, what, what more can there be? <laughs> there would be some kind of exchange also with non-tradable government debt. Uh, there will be some other fiscal adjustment that would have to be made beyond what is contained in the 2023 budget, right? Because, you know, to crawl back to a more sustainable level right now where we are, because across almost all the uh, debt sustainability dependency uh, indicators, 
we are trending in some cases more than 40 percent above the policy dependency threshold at the baseline estimation okay so so the level of adjustment that we need to make in order to bring our debt to a more sustainable level even is very is very deep unfortunately what makes it sad is, is the lack of disclosure and transparency on, on, on the part of our government and their lack of consultation, right? Coming with clean hands, honesty, humility, to say that, look, this is the extent of the problem. I need all of you to come on board. Look, the government has adopted an approach like they more or less want to ambush the market, like take the market by trickery or something. I mean, it, it doesn't help. But I would also appeal to all Ghanaians that a certain level of debt restructuring would have to be undertaken. We let's brace ourselves up for some level of debt restructuring. Prof, Prof so the direct question then, can the government afford to exempt pension funds? Government can afford to do anything. Government can afford to do it. The, the role of fiscal power is so strong, okay? But on the other hand, also, you are looking at equity fairness and all of that. So, but this government can't afford to do that because this is a government that has preached burden sharing more in ways and practice less in reality. And that is what makes it painful. And I believe that the reactions we are getting from um, uh, organized labor across the different occupational groups, and and even not only that, even from 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 a lot of stakeholders that will be affected in this SST, is actually a resentment against government insensitivity. Um, because government has done very minimum in the burden sharing. Okay, in in times like this, the low hanging fruit. That's actually what people are saying. The low hanging fruits essentially are. Cutting down the size of government, merging some of the ministries. Look, because money is not flowing, a lot of the ministers and deputy ministers are not doing much. In fact, one minister could afford to be in the U.S. for so many months, and this country was still running. So, so, and 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 it's harder now advising Ghanaians to sacrifice because we have been sacrificing since independence. And we don't see the dividend redistributed equally or fairly through the system, right? And this debt exchange, look, even, even what makes it a bit more interesting, you see government packaging the whole thing as voluntary. There's nothing voluntary in there, right? It's compulsory, essentially. And what the approach I see government is using is more or less through regulatory coercion to bring to bring the participating financial institutions into compliance, right? Now, if you look at the timeline that the government has given, it doesn't even allow for internal processes and governance processes within the respective participating financial institutions to be respected. And I guess you're referring to the 19th uh, December deadline. Yes, because this is a significant event. This is a significant event. Some may even require shareholder approval, board approval and all of that. So how do you just put pressure on heads of the institutions to commit their institutions but, to, but, but, to but something prof, like prof, this? They are only doing this because the IMF staff uh, consultations final round is this week. So they need this. They need this to, to close this look, deal. Look, Evans, I can forgive the IMF in this matter. It, it shouldn't even take the IMF to ask us to put our house in order. It's shameful as a country. Your debt we watched our debt numbers to reach this level, and we want to blame it on the IMF. I'm sorry. Mm. I mean, let me bring in Dr. Kabanayako quickly. Um, Doc, so you've indicated that 19th, that's next week, Monday, and coincidentally, that's the, that's the final day for the debt exchange uh, window to close. If the government does not announce your exemption, then you are meeting. You've actually served notice to your workers across the country that uh, they should be prepared for any industrial action that may come on. Do I take it that the ultimate then after 19th, if you don't get it, is a nationwide industrial action? Of course, there will be a nationwide industrial action if government fails to accede to our request, or maybe more appropriately, our demand. Uh, but the form of that industrial action will be determined in the course of this week uh, when 
both the steering committee of the TUC and the general council of the TUC, which is the second highest decision-making body, meets from Wednesday to Friday. So we will then determine the form of that industrial. And I need to ask you, when the TUC, it, it's very rare to get a TUC leading this. Does, is this the position of all unions in this country? Um, I mean, at least it is the position of all the 22 unions that, are, that make up the TUC. But you know there are some unions that are not part of the TUC, but they've already also issued similar communications to the effect that they will also not participate. But you see, if, I mean, the, the prof has indicated the need for consultation. In some countries where this thing has taken place, the consultations were so extensive that it is the bondholders themselves that suggested a way out. Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. this has not happened in, in this yeah. country. The second yeah. point is that, you see, the debt we are looking at, I mean, we should take our time to look at it very well. So the over 100% government debt, some of it are debts owed to the central bank. If you take the 31 trillion debt of the United States government, much of it is also owed to the central bank or the, or the, or the U.S. government. You don't go and do a program and think that the debt owed to the central bank should all be put together. And based on which you want to do a radical fiscal adjustment, regardless of its implication on the population. Very interesting uh, suggestions and insights into this, uh, uh, Doc. But I'm very grateful that you joined us. I just ran out of time on this. Uh, thank you, Professor Goffer Bopping. Thank you, uh, uh, the TUC's uh, Director of Research and Economics, also there joining us with your thoughts on this. Where do you stand on this? You side with the TUC? I want to hear from you on Newsnight.